I wish to create a mega dungeon, something so huge that it takes months of exploring and adventuring to get through and finally defeat. But I also don't want it to be a slog and a bore and for my players to think that I'm not very exciting. Need a mega dungeon? Well, this week's sponsor is, of course, Dungeon Fog. Now, this is a mega dungeon that I have started to create old school style, because why not? It's one of the many features of Dungeon Fog. You can make your maps in almost any style you like. Well, this is a mega dungeon that I put together in, I kid you not, about 40 minutes, give or take, thanks to all of the various tools, tips, tricks, and things you can do within Dungeon Fog. I've also made this map available to you. If you head on over to the Dungeon Fog community page, you'll find this map available so you can add it to your own arsenal of maps and populate it however you choose. As a matter of fact, you could use this whilst watching this video to see how to make this map even more interesting. A massive, massive thank you to Dungeon Fog. You don't need a subscription to use it, but it helps. Use the code GREATGM for a discount and get monthly rewards that you can't believe. Hello and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great GM. My name is Guy and we are talking about Mega Dungeons. Welcome to the Mega Dungeon. This is the Mega Dungeon. Mega Dungeon. Yeah. Yeah. Mega Dungeons. It was a question that was posted on the Suggest a Video topic on discord.gg forward slash great GM. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, if you find that these videos take quite a long time to listen to because they're quite long, I suggest that you hit that little two times playback speed. I know I certainly do on a lot of videos. You'd be amazed at what it does in terms of making people be able to speak faster so you can understand what they're saying because they give you ideas and inspiration for your game. But maybe you don't have enough time to listen to them. So, whatever you choose to do, uh, hit that two times button, and while you're down there, hit that like button. Uh, you never know what that like will do. Well, I'll tell you. It, um, well, it boosts the channel. It makes the channel get seen by more people, and effectively that means we can carry on carry oning. Also, a big thank you to my patrons who make carry on carry oning very, very, very much easier as they support the channel. And, uh, yes, massive thank you to all of you. Their names are listed as heroes at the end of the show. Let's move into Mega Dungeons. What do we need, O oh, wise and useless one? The purpose of the dungeon. What was its purpose? When you think about these kinds of structures, these Mega Dungeons, there must have been a reason. Now, as he's going to talk you through all the normal stuff, think about the magical stuff. Is this dungeon a construct of the imagination of a child sitting on a dimension that is so twisted and warped that we ourselves couldn't possibly conceive of it? Is this a playground of some maniacal god or demigod or demon? Or where is this thing sitting in terms of the why. Why is it here? When you're trying to come up with the idea or the purpose of this mega dungeon, it could be the construct of a crazy psychopathic person who had a vast amount of money and a vast amount of time. That doesn't really make much sense. However, a complex that has grown and increased in size over time, well, now that's much more of an interesting idea, in my opinion. The Forbidden City in China comes to mind. Over a thousand rooms. If that isn't a mega dungeon, I don't know what is. Now, why did it end up being over a thousand rooms? Well, it's the same reason as why the estate homes of England get to having 20 or 30 or 40 rooms in them. You go, but how did people use all of those rooms? Most of it's storage or administrative stuff for other things not directly related to the central idea. So the Forbidden City, the palace, at the very center was the palace, but everything around it was there to support the palace, to make sure the grain was happening, tax offices, tax collection offices, just an entire army of individuals all connected by passageways and corridors. And I think that that is a very interesting place to start with your mega dungeon. So when you are designing your mega dungeon, have an original structure at the middle, at the center, because I think most of the time, this is where they come from, is they have a central structure that was built for a specific 
purpose. And that purpose could be anything. You can you can come up with any purpose that you like. A temple, um, a sacred chamber, a tomb, a crypt, a... You choose, you can add it in. But then from there, they just expand outwards and upwards depending, or downwards depending. Although that central crypt will most likely then be changed. So this is something that I think we, we really need to consider when we are looking at this, this, this space is that things change over time. They are constantly being used and then updated and then changed. So that central tomb that you originally created, which had a single passageway into the side of the mountain, or out of the mountain, I should say, suddenly that is no longer sufficient for the amount of dead that are being interred there. So they have to dig down and make a holding chamber and then dig further down to get to the actual tomb itself. Okay, well, now we've started to get three levels. But then the next group take over and they go, you know what, that wasn't a great idea, but I think this is more of a defensive thing. We can build an outer wall and then we can add in some rooms on the top levels. The mid levels can be used for accommodation and the bottom levels, yes, yes, there's those tombs, but we can just chisel to the left or build to the right and add in storage facilities. Run that over a hundred years and this thing has started to balloon outwards. If it's inside a mountain, if it's underground, the same thing can kind of happen. If you are building a mega dungeon on the surface, such as the Forbidden City, it just starts to expand outwards, certain walls get knocked down and things. Now, when it comes to designing these kinds of things, it really is not about having to run this history in your head, although that could be a lot of fun to do as a thought exercise. All right, so now that we've established the purpose of this mega dungeon, what is next? What do they say is the spice of life? Uh, variety. Variety is the spice of life. Creating a thousand room dungeon where every single room is identical to every single other room is the same as creating a one-room dungeon where the door leads out of the room and back into the front of the room. Does that make sense? So what we need to add is variety. We need to add in all kinds of amazing and wonderful things to differentiate different parts of this mega dungeon. We need to add variety. And he's going to tell you how, hopefully. Well, think about the different places, the different biomes that we would normally experience in the world itself. So within the dungeon, you can have rivers, large rivers, as a matter of fact. Those rivers have inhabitants. They've got to be crossed. They've got currents. There's pools. There's lakes, perhaps. Those could be artificial rivers that have been created to bring water into the dungeon, because that is something you need to think about is how, if people were living there or if there were species that were meant to survive down there, how do they get water? How do they get food? Okay, so we have a giant river. That river could transport the food from the outside to the inside. Well, that's brilliant, but it also gives us a different variety, a different biome to play in. It's not just here are concrete or here are stone walls or cave walls that you are moving through, and it's the same, and it's the same, and it's the same. Now suddenly, well, there's a river, and there's a boat, and so now you're on a boat on a river within this mega dungeon. You're still going through it. You're still experiencing the mega dungeon, but it's a different environment altogether. How do you incorporate something like open planes within a mega dungeon? Well, welcome to the giant arena that was built into this mega dungeon for the occupants to enjoy uh, large sporting events or chariot races or whatever. And welcome to the fact that this is now overgrown with fungi or with weird uh, sea anemone type grasses that undulate unnaturally in their own breezes that the players now have to walk through. So now you've added in a plane. Mountain ranges are super simple. Well, you arrive at a chamber and there is this massive crevasse that has ripped open due to an earthquake a hundred years ago. You've got to climb down it and then you've got to climb back up it on the other side. Think about when you are designing your mega dungeon, not so much 
in terms of room by room by room, but biome by biome by biome. And you'll find that suddenly, if you even just chart out the biomes first and go, well, I'd like a bit of a river here and a bit of a swamp there because the river flows into the swamp. That makes sense. Uh, I'd like a mountain range over here and I'd like a this and I'd like a that. And then you put your dungeon on top of that. You can see, well, this room... It needs to have a river in it. So why would a room have a river? Well, it's a cistern or it's an aquifer or perhaps it is just a bathing pool. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Okay, so this was a bathhouse within the mega dungeon. How does this, what does a swamp represent? Well, this is where the floor is rotten through. And so the wooden floor, we can see three la layers below and it's this weird swampy, mulchy kind of, of, of thing. And then of course you can populate that with all of the different things that you, you really like in there. Right, so now that we've got these very interesting multi-layered dungeons that have grown and expanded over time and have different environments in them, what else? You already have the tool if you've watched this channel for an extensive period of time. How do we in ensure that each section not only feels different, is, not, is different, but we need to make the actual journey that the PCs are on feel different as well? And that means we need to rely on our four adventure types. That's right. We need to make sure that we have many adventures within the bigger adventure. You'll see why it's important, hopefully. I think this is something that, as a player of a Mega Dungeon, which I absolutely... I love the game. I love the people I was playing with. But my goodness, did I hate the Mega Dungeon. Because the Mega Dungeon was very samey. It kind of felt like we were just in a constantly closed off little room moving from one room to the next room to the next room without ever having any differences. So by using the four adventures, thwarting, collecting, delivering, discovering, these should now be branded into your brain if you've been watching this channel for any length of time. Make sure that you have micro adventures within the mega dungeon. So yes, you want to get to the heart of the dungeon because the evil lich resides there. But that doesn't mean that that's one adventure that the players are just going to be stuck in for the next 10 years. I beg your pardon. It's more about, okay, this section that they need to get into the actual main complex. Maybe it's a discovery mission where they need to discover a map that gives them the basic layout of the dungeon a thousand years ago. Aha, it's a discovery adventure. So now I can apply all of the structure that normally goes with a discovery adventure and I can plan it out accordingly. So the encounters that I'm going to build, the steps I'm going to take or plan to take, those now create that adventure. Once they've got that map, okay, now I can't have them discovering something new. So now they need to know something that they have to then do. Are they going to go and collect, deliver something perhaps? Maybe when they get the map, there is a goblin there who says, I was uh, picking mushrooms and I got lost from my family. If you escort me back to my uh, family uh, grotto, uh, I'll give you a reward. It's not that dangerous. I mean, I was on my own, wasn't I? And if I happen to lead you through the camp of ogres that have been betraying my people for the last five years, uh, well, that's, you know, your problem. Uh, hopefully it will resolve things, you know, you know. So think about it from that perspective. So within the mega dungeon, you might have 12 or 13 or 14 or 15 adventures until you get to that final showdown at the very center of the dungeon or at the bottom of the dungeon or whatever your, your premise is for your dungeon. So, super simple. Okay, it's my favorite thing to do because it's so simple and it's so easy. And once you learn how to apply it and use it like a fine little tool, you can manipulate the player characters and by default the players into doing amazing things and having wonderful experiences. I am, of course, talking about the three Ps. Pain, pressure, and problem. Give those to the players in your mega dungeon. Give them at different times. Use them at different levels and different parts of the dungeon. And the dungeon will feel very different. And that means it's good. The three Ps are good when we use them to make bad things happen. <laughs>
God, I love those three peas. No, actually, I just love peas. They're very nice peas, aren't they? Little round green spheres of earthy joy. Sweet sometimes. Anyway, peas. The three peas. Pressure, pain, and problems. What are those? What are those? Those are what they are. The three peas. Pain, pressure, and problems. And so if each of your adventures has one of those as its as its backbone so this adventure is very painful this adventure is very problematic this adventure is very uh, pressured there's a lot of time here parts of it are collapsing the maze keeps changing uh the arctic area that you're in you will freeze to death if you stay in here for too long all those kinds of wonderful little extra bits that you can add in are going to make that space feel even more different from the previous spaces that you're in. And so suddenly you have this mega dungeon that's filled with different adventures, filled with different environments, and everything just feels awesome. And so that's my take on mega dungeons. Remember, hit, 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 hit that like button. And also, if you want to support this channel, we have a Patreon community. The Patreons are amazing. Your support is mind-blowing and humbling, and I thank each and every single one of you. I really do. Until next time, I wish you and yours the very happiest of gaming.